Hello navigation friends, John here with the Columbia River Orienteering Club in Portland, Oregon. Gaia GPS is the best backcountry GPS phone app and in 2017 it got even better. This video covers some of the major new features. It's geared for iPhone users, but Android folks can follow along as well. This video is a bit on the long side, but in a moment you'll see a list of the topics we'll cover along with a timestamp so you can jump ahead if you want to. If you're new to Gaia GPS, I suggest you watch the entire video. Feel free to hit pause in a second to more carefully read the list of what we'll cover. First, a quick note on which app to get on the iTunes Apple Store. It's not always easy to figure out. You're going to see three options, at least as of May 2017. The first, Gaia GPS Classic. That's the older version of the app. Still works fine, but doesn't have all the new features you want. Second, you might see Gaia GPS Topo Bundle. That is Maps Only. You also don't want that one. The app you want to download is this one, Gaia GPS Topo Maps and Hiking Trails with the yellow border around the app. And if you tap it open and scroll down a little bit, you'll see it's got a release date of May 2017. That's the one you want. First, if you haven't done so, you want to make a user account at GaiaGPS.com. Then open the app, go to Settings on the bottom right corner, tap Account, and be sure you have Sync Backup toggled to the On position. Off, On. Doing this backs up all of your saved tracks, waypoints, routes, and maps you have on your phone to the Gaia GPS website. You can also upload tracks and waypoints from other sources to your Gaia GPS account and then have them synced to your phone. If you ever get a prompt that says something like, allow location services for Gaia even if the app is turned off, you want to be sure and allow this. Doing so lets you continuously record a track even if the app is in the background, which really helps reduce battery use. To get to this setting on an iPhone, tap Settings, Privacy, Location Services, scroll down to Gaia GPS, and then tap Allow Location Access Always, as we see here. One of the main upgrades to Gaia is a streamlined menu that lets you do pretty much anything you want with just one or two taps. Let's look at the top screen layout. The upper left corner is the magnifying glass or search tool. This works pretty well if you're looking for major geographic features like a mountain or lake, but not very well for trail names, and it gives you results from all over the world. I honestly don't use it very much and prefer to manually zoom into where I want to go. The second icon is the four arrows icon, which toggles you between partial screen and full screen. It also shows you map display functions. If you do a long press on that, it brings up map display options for top and bottom controls statistics bar, compass, rotation, and lock screen. Let's have a look at lock screen for a sec. If we turn that on, the map turns into a fixed screen, which doesn't uh, respond to tapping. To turn this off, take the little padlock on the bottom and slide that to the right. Now you're back to normal view. The third icon across the top is the crosshairs. If we tap that, it's gonna zoom me into my current position. Now we're zoom way out flying right into Portland, Oregon, and here we are where I'm currently at. Notice that the crosshairs have changed to a red color. This centers your position on the map, which is helpful if you're on a bike ride or a car and moving quickly. If I tap it one more time, the crosshairs turn, or the icon rather, turns green. Uh, this is called map up or map rotation, and if I turn the phone, the map orients itself to uh, match the direction that I'm pointing, which is pretty handy if you're doing fine scale navigation work, but it does suck the battery a little bit, so I'm going to turn that off with one more tap. The fourth icon across the top, I call it the Phillips screwdriver, that's the add icon. If we tap that, it brings up options to record a track, add a waypoint, create a route, or download maps. This is a very handy screen, and you'll probably be spending a lot of time on that one. Finally, the last icon across the top is the map layers icon. Looks like three pieces of paper. If we tap that, we can see the three default map sources that come with Gaia when you first load it up. Gaia Topo, Satellite with Labels, and USGS Topo. 
Because this option is grayed out, we're currently using the Gaia Topo layer, but we can change between map layers easily by tapping and choosing a different one. Now we're on satellite, and now we're on USGS topographic map. Gaia gives you three map layers to start with, but there are many more that you can use. Let's add some. Tap the Map Layers icon on the top right corner of your main screen, tap Edit, and then tap Topo Maps. Notice the Gaia Topo and Feet at the top has a red X by it. This means it's already been added to your list of available maps. Let's add two more maps to our list of maps. Open Topo about halfway down. We'll tap it once and change the plus to a red X. And beneath that, Open Cycle. Let's tap that one as well. Doing this adds both these map layers to our list of available maps. Open Topo has worldwide coverage, nice shade of relief, shows roads and updated trails, and some public lands. Used along with the Open Cycle layer, which I think shows roads and trails slightly more clearly, it's a great combination for hiking and outdoor exploration. Note that heights and contours are metric on both of these maps. To see these loaded on our list of available maps, we can tap back, map sources, and now note that Open Cycle and Open Topo are added to our list of maps. If we want to delete any map source from our list here of map sources, we can simply do the Apple thing of slide left and tap delete. It does not permanently get rid of the maps, it just sends them back sort of to the archive, and you can always add them later if you want. Now let's have a closer look at the show statistics bar. On the top menu, do a long touch on the second icon, the four arrows, and then toggle on the stats bar. Now, we do a long touch on the stats bar itself, and we see a list of scrolling options where we can set the parameters of the statistics that we show for whatever activity that we're on. For example, this is set for a bike ride where I wanted to know distance and total time. If I was going on a hiking or mountaineering trip, I might want to change this to altitude, and to show my coordinates, to show my location where I am on the map. Now we've got record, altitude, and coordinates. I can tap one more time, single tap on the stats bar to set these parameters. Once you have the stats bar displayed with record as one of the options, tap the record button to begin a new track. Notice the timer in the upper left corner showing the elapsed time. When you're moving, you should see a track line start to form behind the orange You Are Here arrow. Tap the record button once more to pause, finish, or delete your track. Recording a track can take extra battery power, so it's not something you want to do on every trip. Gaia works perfectly in airplane mode, which blocks cell data but still allows use of the GPS chip. Especially if you're outside of cell phone coverage, you should always have your phone in airplane mode to preserve your battery. To help extend your battery even more, you can turn the screen off. Even though your display is black, your track is still recording. If you plan on continuous track recording for more than a few hours, bring an extra battery pack and charging cable. Let's look at a very handy function in Gaia, creating a route. A route is a series of waypoints that are meant to be followed in a certain order. Generally, I prefer to use tracks, which can be more helpful in the backcountry, but if I forget to load one on my phone before I leave town, I'm out of luck. Using the route function lets you create a line to follow on the fly when you're in the field. And in the new Gaia app, it lets you snap your route to an existing trail, which is really helpful. Before, making a route entailed adding lots of small little choppy straight line segments, but now you can cover a long distance in just a couple of clicks and your route will exactly follow an existing trail. Here's how to do it. For our example, we'll be using a climb on Mount St. Helens in Washington State. Zoom into the start of your trip, which is usually a trailhead or a parking lot. In this case, it's this one right here. And because the first waypoint on a route is gonna be in the center of the screen, it's good to zoom in really close for your first one. Let's tap the fourth icon across the top, our Phillips screwdriver, the add icon, and tap create route. Notice that it drops a blue waypoint in the middle of our screen at the parking lot and at the bottom it tells you how to add more. Long press the map to add points to your route. I don't need to be this zoomed in for the rest of my route adding so I'm going to go up to the first trail junction here and if I long touch that one notice that rather than making a straight line segment the first leg of the route has snapped to the existing trail. 
I can scroll up more to the top of the screen at the top of the route, tap once more, and just with two of those three waypoints, we've made the entire hiking route from the bottom to the top of the mountain. Notice on the bottom we've got a distance and vertical gain, slight elevation profile. Uh, one other thing I'll point out here, the mode button on the bottom, it's set to hiking. If we were to tap that to um, bring up the little menu, notice we've got hiking, cycling, driving, and straight line. Straight line is as the bird flies, as the crow flies. Those are for times when you don't want to use the snap to trail function. Play around with these and see which one suits your needs the best. At this point, we can tap save if we like our route on the top. It brings up an option for to name our route. We can choose this one, monitor ridge climbing route. And if we tap low, medium, or high map resolution, it gives us an option to download any one of several different layers at different resolutions that cover our trail in sort of a skinny, narrow corridor on either side of the route. Let's talk more about downloading maps for offline use. When you're using Gaia with a cell phone connection or Wi-Fi, the maps load almost instantaneously. So if you're hiking where you have good cell coverage, you probably don't need to download maps before your hike. However, if you're planning a trip out of cell phone range, you have to download the maps you want over a cell connection or Wi-Fi before you start your hike in order to use them with the app. Gaia offers two ways to do this. One option is called Download Maps for Track, and we saw that briefly in the previous section of the video. Doing this gives you a sort of skinny, narrow corridor of map tiles along either side of your track. For activities like a bike ride or a long river trip, this might work well, but often for hiking or mountaineering, it's more helpful to have map coverage that extends farther around your actual route. Let's look at an example of download maps for track. If I tap the saved folder on the bottom, it brings up the downloaded maps for track that we just did, and notice it's a long, skinny rectangle. Let's see how we can save maps over a larger area. Let's go back to our main map from the lower left corner. Let's choose the fourth icon across the top, the Phillips screwdriver, the add icon. I'm gonna tap that and then tap download maps. Notice a couple of things here. We've got an orange box that popped up with blue circles at the corners. And underneath that is the previous map that we've downloaded showing the area of our track. We can move the orange box and grab the circles in the corners and resize it to whatever size we want. And when it looks good, tap save and you'll be able to download a map that covers a much larger area than the original version. Keep an eye on the memory of your phone. Don't go too crazy downloading a really big area of map at a high resolution because it could max out all the memory in your phone. So unless you have a phone with a lot of available memory or maybe an extra chip, it's usually best practice to download a single map that covers one hike at a time. Let's look at the route we just saved and do a few things to it, like change the color, change the name, and maybe share it with a friend. Go to the Saved folder on the bottom edge of your screen and choose Routes from the three horizontal line menu in the upper left corner. Here it says Maps. We tap it once and select Routes, and we see the St. Helens route that we just saved. Tap the Preview window to bring up the next screen. Look for two icons in the top right corner. One is a little pencil with a circle around it. That's the edit icon. If we tap this, we see some options for changing the color and editing the title of your route or track. Also in the upper right corner, you see three horizontal small circles. This is known as the action icon and lets you do some pretty important things. Let's see what that brings up. Here we've got guide me, export, and download maps for track, among others. Now if we tap the guide me function, it brings up a screen showing you the distance and bearing from your current location to a track or waypoint. This can be especially helpful when trying to find a waypoint such as your campsite at night because it gives you the distance and bearing to that exact right spot. We turn the guide me function off by tapping the large green X. Tap the saved folder on the bottom to bring you back to the preview screen. Tapping the action icon once more in the top right corner we can tap export, which can be pretty handy to text or email your map to someone else, which is great if you have a downloaded map and track and your hiking partner does not. And finally, if we tap download maps for track, it brings up a screen where we can choose the resolution and map layer from any number of choices to download for use offline.
The default coordinate display for Gaia is latitude longitude decimal degrees. We can see that here in the statistics bar in the upper right corner. However, if we want to change the coordinate system to something else like UTM, it's easy to do that. Tap settings in the lower right corner, tap units, then tap coordinate type. Here we can scroll through to select a different system such as UTM. If we tap map in the lower left corner to return to our map screen, we can now see the position in the upper right corner has changed from decimal degrees to UTM. While we're here in settings, let's look at another one which can free up a lot of space on your phone. When you're zooming around looking at a lot of different maps, the app is saving these map tiles onto the memory of your phone. If you do this a lot, it can take up a lot of memory, and if you're on a 16 gig phone like I am, this can be a problem. Here's an easy solution. Go to Settings on the bottom right corner, tap Storage, then tap Clear Cache. If you hit OK, it'll delete all of the recent map tiles that are temporarily been loaded on your phone, freeing up some memory. Note that this does not delete maps you have intentionally saved, only the map tiles loaded into the temporary memory. Also here, if we tap storage use, it can give you a detailed look at which parts of the app are taking up the most room. I can see here I've got a Gaia Topo map of feet of 144 megs. If I didn't need that anymore, I could delete that and free up a lot of space. Well, that's about it for now. This should be more than enough to get you started in using the new and improved version of Gaia GPS. You can easily practice more with this app just by going on a short walk around your neighborhood, which I strongly encourage you to do before you rely on it in the backcountry. And remember to always bring a small auxiliary battery and a charging cable, and also a printed map and compass to augment your GPS. That's all for now. Go have some fun in the backcountry.